Past technical seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Okay, um, as I said too, I'm using Visual Studio Ultimate and here's a quick visual breakdown of what that means um, and the different versions of Visual Studio that can, can be purchased. We see we've got the professional edition that's got the unit testing and some SharePoint development, web development, Windows development, that sort of thing. Then there's the premium edition. Um, which supports some read-only architecture diagrams, code analysis, code metrics. Um, the database change management now is included in the premium edition. Uh, user interface test automation, that's the coded UI test, is supported in premium. Code coverage and test impact analysis. We're going to spend most of our time looking at the test professional. That's for our test case management and our manual testing. And then um, up there in the, when you get the ultimate edition, um, that's going to give us the IntelliTrace, some uh, web and load testing, UML modeling, and that sort of thing. This next slide um, is an interesting slide I got from Ewan Garden out at Microsoft. He's an architect that works on the ALM and test tools. Uh, he was giving a presentation at our user group, and boy, does this look awful. Um, it didn't look awful when he showed it, and it didn't look awful until I uploaded it to live meeting. The, the point of this, though, is we've got a continuum of um, the, the types of skills that a tester can have, and you have over on the left um, the generalist that has the, the skills to perform the manual testing and that sort of thing. And then you've got all the way over on the far, far right, you've got um, expert coding skills. And I just wanted to um, mention what their marketing research uh, found was that 70% of the testing happens sort of down at the more manual or some basic scripting, running some uh, database scripts and setting up environments, that sort of thing. Uh, yet the majority of the test tools tend to target the um, mid to high level coding QA professionals. So we're going to spend the majority of our time here looking at um, what the generalist, how the generalist would use the new Microsoft testing tools. Okay, um, the presentation, I think what I'm going to do is break it up into two sections. Uh, I'm going to give a, quite a lengthy demo in the middle of uh, just a really a tour of the test and lab manager tool. But from a high level, um, what we're interested in when we're talking about test planning is creating our test plans, um, planning the configuration matrix. And what I mean by that is what operating systems do you need to run your tests on, you know, what maybe versions of IE do you need to test against, what version of IIS, that sort of thing. We're going to take a look at creating the actual test cases. We're going to see something called shared steps, uh, which is uh, akin to the coder as uh, code reuse. We're going to take, um, we're going to take a good look at that. We're also going to look at how you assign who will run what tests, and we're going to look at planning the, the setup that you need for your testing. And what, what that means is um, all of these things I talked about earlier with TFS and the, the uh, code repository, all those things are, are and can be tied tightly together. Um, and to be able to do that, you need to configure what data you want to collect as you're running through your tests and that sort of thing. We're going to also look at something called a test suite, which is really just a bucket for organizing um, different types of tests. It's very robust. You can almost think of these as uh, little window windows folders. 
And we're also going to see importing test suites from another test plan. Next thing we're going to go over is we're going to actually look at running the tests. Uh, setting up test machines, we, we already mentioned that, but there's also the ability to kind of override the default um, data that you're collecting at any, any given point in time. We're going to look at running manual tests from a test plan, how, how the tool can be used to speed up the manual testing. We're going to take a peek at running automated tests, uh, though we're not going to get into that too much. We're also going to go through the process of verifying a bug and, and take a look at some of the test results. And also just going to show you a quick uh, quick and cool feature called exploratory testing. Uh, next thing we're going to do is um, take a look at the what the tool provides us as far as um, tracking, taking a look at what uh, user stories don't have test cases and what test cases have been run and, and how many tests are passing, how many tests are failing, and how you'd go about uh, prioritizing bugs and that sort of thing, assigning which builds you want your uh, test plan to run against, and um, also look at just some of the query capabilities of the tool. Do some demo now. Um, what we're looking at now is the test and lab manager. Um, we've got along the top what Microsoft calls the center group. So we'd have a plan center group and a test center group track and organize. And I'd like to start in the uh, organized center group here and just go through all of these tabs kind of in sequence and show you what's going on. What, what we're going to find, too, throughout the uh, demonstration is that there's a lot of different places and a lot of different ways to do the same thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and create, create myself a test plan. Um, and I'm going to create it in a state that's inactive because I'm just, uh, just starting now. It's not ready to be tested or anything like that. Um, we'll just call it something short, my alpha test plan. The area path and iteration, these are grouping mechanisms within uh, TFS, and I'm not going to go into them in, in too much too much detail. Uh, the fact of the matter is when it, when it uh, comes time to implement TFS for yourself, what you're very likely going to want to do is create your, customize your own processes and that sort of thing. So these, what, what you're going to see in the area pass and what you're going to see in iteration is highly variable depending on your process. Okay, so now um, I've created my test plan. Uh, we're going to take a look at what these test environments mean later, but this is where I'm going to go and, and uh, assign my test environment. And, and this is basically, or I'm sorry, test settings in this case. This is how I'm telling the tool what data to collect during a, a test run. And then um, I've mentioned a couple of times, we're not going to go into the lab center portion here, but this would be if you're using the lab manager, this is also where you could determine if you're using um, your local environment for the test run or virtual environments. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. <laughs>